a 40 watt 660 LED lamp and I was sent this by a friend and this is someone I served my apprenticeship with many moons ago with a, in an electrical engineering company called EJ Steel & Co. And they specialised in steelwork, uh, in the power distribution. It was quite an interesting, albeit heavy, apprenticeship. And he was, in fact, my electrician for a good portion of that time. I was his apprentice. And thanks to the power of Facebook, uh, he sent me a, a message on Facebook and we got back in touch. And he knows I'm into my lighting. I've always been into my lighting. So he randomly sent me this gift of a very high power corn cob LED lamp. Um, so uh, thanks, Alan. That's a, a nice thing. I should at this point say, I would, if you if people are leaving school and they're thinking of getting, you know, they're looking at job options, I'd strongly recommend an industrial apprenticeship, something in a heavy, complex, technical trade, because uh, not only will you get paid for doing an apprenticeship, but um, you will end up with a skill for life. You will end up working for life, because all the really heavy jobs, the dirty, menial jobs, not many people want them, and that's where... Ultimately, you're going to find the greatest job security. So I just thought I'd slot that in. Now, on to the lamp, because uh, let's analyse this lamp. It has 12 circuit boards going up the sides, and it's got one large round circuit board in the end. Each of the 12 circuit boards up the sides has 50 LEDs, and the circuit board in the end has 66 LEDs. Now, initially when I got this, I thought, I wonder if this is one of these dodgy mains voltage ones that uses a multiple of the... The capacitive droppers and the LEDs are all basically referenced to the main. So I did some tests, and it's not. And also looking at it, um, when you look at the tr track layers in the end, it's clear that all the LEDs in this are wired in series multiples of 10. And I thought that was quite odd, um, in a way. Even the stripes up the side, they're actually configured, and I'll just bring this bit of paper over. Even the strips up the side are configured... The 50 LEDs are divided into 10 groups of 5. Each of the groups of 5 uh, are wired in, each set of 5 is wired in parallel, and then each parallel circuit is then wired as a chain, um, so they're in series. So you basically end up with uh, 50 LEDs, but wired as equivalent to 10 LEDs in series, where each LED is actually 5. Likewise, on the end circuit board, it seems to be a double-sided board with a power plane in the back that comes through to the front wherever um, each set of 10 LEDs starts. And it, starting from the middle, it goes out in a spiral fashion, and it starts off positive, and then the LEDs are just linked in the spiral fashion 10 at a time, then ending in negative, positive, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, negative, and the same all the way around until you get the full number of LEDs used. So that makes sense because if you think that one of the most standard ways of driving high power LEDs in the industry is these LED drivers for this style of LED, and you think the LEDs in these are just series multiples of 10. This is a 20 watt LED, it's got two series of 10. A 40 watt LED would have four series of 10, so basically just large parallel clusters of 10 LEDs in series. And in this case, uh, if this was a 40 watt LED lamp, this would be putting out about 30 volts, and it would be roughly 300 milliamps per, per 10 watts. Um, so that would be about 1,200 milliamps. So working on that uh, arrangement, the driver has just... 10 series LEDs, but it's actually got 66 sets of those 10 LEDs. And if you think that uh, it's, if it's putting out uh, 1,200 milliamps, and it's got 66 of those circuits, then 1,000 divided by 66 circuits is 1,200 milliamps divided by 66 circuits equals 18 milliamps. Approximately 18 milliamps per LED. And that is just absolutely perfect because these are, that's the style of LED is rated for um, 20 milliamps max. So that uh, works out just fine. Inside, uh, the these circuit boards all get their power from this base circuit board and the top one has wires going up to it. Also inside are a series of metal rings, almost like the, the well I'll show you, I'll just actually show you what's inside this by holding up to the 
camera lens. There we go. So there's a ventilation slot at the bottom into the electronics to allow airflow through. And then there's those two wires, the red and white, coming up to the end PCB, which gets its wire. It, the other PCBs are actually fed from the, the bus PCB, PCB at the base. But the top PCB, this uh, cluster here, is fed with, by those two wires from the base. And then the um, you can see the fins going down the inside of that. It's just that they don't cover the full diameter of the lamp. It's just a, a series of, of rings. Um, that are just bonded in some way onto the aluminium substrate just to provide uh, heat dissipation. So let's open this up and see what this driver's like inside. So it appears to be held shut by two screws that are only in by a couple of threads. Oop. And there's a spacer ring here, and then the driver circuit board on the base. A few surface mount components in the back, and uh, I guess in there just switch mode drivers. I'd guess the topography in this is just really going to be uh, mains in, rectifier, smoothing, filtering. Oh, I'll remember that one's got a little, in fact, I'll just leave that little washer on there. It's going to come out. I may have to use the force. Or the correct screwdriver would probably help. Mm, that should work better. What do we have? Quite a beefy power supply. Look at the filtering in that. This is a... So the mains is coming in here. Uh, there's a fuse. Then there's a suppression capacitor with a couple of discharge resistors across it. Then a metal oxide varistor across that and a spark gap too. Across... How odd. Uh... The spark gap is across what looks like the the um, common mode suppression filter. Then there's a bridge rectifier. Um, that looks like a bit more filtering after the bridge rectifier. Quite a complex set. It's definitely not the simplicity of the of these type of drivers, it's definitely a lot more complicated. It may be uh, just a more professional unit aimed at um, uh, providing better electrical noise characteristics and a smoother, um, well, good filtering, uh, a more consistent light output and better power factor. Um, I see a little feedback toroidal coil here. There's a transistor here, and there's a transistor and a separate heat sink here. The transistor on this side, this appears to be the output. Um, I don't know if there's feedback. I don't see an opto isolator, just the usual um, uh, RF interference suppression capacitor across the from the two sides of the transformer. So all the primary circuitry is on this side these two capacitors are the smoothing capacitors and they're in parallel there's the control chip probably just a standard switch mode chip I'm not sure if I'll be able to read that because it's um, got lacquer over it and that may make it quite difficult to read glasses on chip has a number on it. Quite hard to read anything there at all. It's really not very readable. I'll maybe have a go at that afterwards and I'll put a note in the comments if I, if I can actually see uh, the description down below. 
No, it's got a number in it, but it's quite hard to read because it is um, covered in the lacquer. So I'm guessing it's just the typical, um, it's just using primary current regulation in this, primary power regulation through this transformer. I don't think it's, uh, there is no, uh, as I say, there's no opto isolator feedback. You can see it's got quite good um, separation as well on the circuit board uh, anti-tracking slots and things between the circuitry. It's a lot more complicated than I was expecting. There's also this little chip in the output, um, which is possibly providing some level of regulation or other control with that uh, other transistor in the output. I was kind of expecting it just to have a diode and capacitor in the output and just, you know, like these most of these other supplies. But it's not. It's actually fairly fairly complicated. Oh, I'm talking... Uh, oh, do you know what? <clears throat> I don't see much in the way of smoothing on the primary and the input. I think that's probably for power factor... Um, to ensure a very good power factor in this. Um, so it's not doing the usual rectifier and uh, capacitor. It's it's running it uh, seemingly um, on the sort of sine wave, and then all the smoothing's being done in the output, and perhaps a little bit of regulation there as well. Yeah. So without uh, a lot more detailed analysis, I don't think I'll go into this too much. But it it feels chunky. It's heavy. It's, it seems to be quite a good quality light. I have to say. It's, uh, it's interesting, and with plenty of um, ventilation slots to shoot, ensure good airflow, not just through the LEDs, but also through the, um, the circuit board itself, and then more ventilation slots in here to allow the air to flow right through. Yeah, that's quite a neat lamp, I have to say. It's quite, it's quite an interesting lamp. Oh, and uh, what's more, this I'm seeing something else here. I'm seeing that the, they've got connections for a fan as well. I don't know if that will be a separate supply taken from this board for that, and that's just a little patch uh, arrangement, a little, just a couple of common uh, connections. I don't think they're connecting in any way to the the bus that's driving the LEDs, which should be in around about 30 volts, which would be too high for a fan. But that's presumably then designed to actually uh, have a fan physically screwed on there to ensure airflow right through the thing, maybe for a higher power version. Who knows? Maybe just for a version in hotter environments where they want more, more cooling. But yeah, that's quite a that's quite a good light. That's quite an impressive beast of a thing. <laughs>